Some of you have seen a little bit of this uh, earlier today if you were in the session, but this is actually going to be kind of an overview of the, the whole project. So that was kind of some of the specific findings. But uh, this project is uh, tied to the environment. It's also tied to health. Um, it's a couple of the kind of different components of the bigger project. But uh, let me just talk and kind of walk you through this a little bit. Um, the objective of the project, I, I think broadly, and we've, we've kind of been trying to narrow this down a little bit, but it, it's not fully, fully defined even yet. Uh, we're trying to understand how people think about and experience nature through walking and hiking. Uh, why do we want to do this? Uh, it's actually remarkably revealing about people's worldviews and not just worldviews. Lori keeps trying to emphasize that we're not just interested in what people think, but in what they do and their behavior. So we're actually very interested in both of those. And the second reason why I would say we're interested in this, in a complex future, how different are the religious and the non-religious when we focus on something other than religion? Uh, those who were in my session earlier today saw that we're, we're not seeing major differences, but that's part of what we're interested in with this project is trying to tease apart um, <clears throat> if we get people to think about that context of uh, walking and hiking in nature, how do they think about it? How do they reflect on it? And what do they do? That's kind of the big, big kind of general idea. Uh, what have we been doing? So I'm, I'm just going to kind of summarize some of the methodology here, how we've been going about this. Uh, this project began, I mean, I was one of the ones who proposed it, but then we kind of uh, brainstormed a little bit with uh, Lori and Doug, and then other members of the team have all contributed. But it began with the idea that people have and you'll note I'm being very careful with my wording, compelling experiences in nature. I'm not calling them spiritual. I'm not calling them anything else. They're compelling experiences in nature. And many have, and this is really coming from Doug, uh, Ezzy, I think, uh, they have a relationship with nature. And that's something that's been hard for me to wrestle with, but I think it's an important idea to, to, to keep in mind that people do have this relationship. Since we proposed it, uh, a large international team has wrestled with this idea for about the past year. These are some of the people, um, some of the kind of key contributors and some of our students who have been working on this. Um, we started by meeting bi-weekly and reading relevant literature and discussing it and kind of thinking through some of the ideas. That then led to some pilot interviews based on a very loose interview schedule to see if uh, this would work, if this idea made sense to actually explore worldviews and behaviors in the context of walking and, uh, walking and hiking in nature. Um, that then led to the development of a survey, which took uh, a very long time, but we now have a survey um, that is capturing people's experiences walking and hiking and some of their attitudes and behaviors. Um, we've, I've now piloted that twice. Uh, the first time was in fall 2020, and I'm going to show a little bit of that data just very, very briefly because I know I'm supposed to be short. Um, the one I'm showing today is uh, in this session is fall 2020. The last one I showed was spring 2021. Um, but that's data from people my students recruited in my classes. And I think it's been very, very helpful to help us figure out what we should include in the survey and what some of the things we, we dropped because they just didn't seem to be all that relevant. Um, very quickly on this, uh, the participants for this one, this is the fall 2020 data. It's 404 participants. That's just a breakdown of gender, age, and country. Most of them are from the US. Um, here are some of the responses. So their understanding of what nature is, 36% uh, say nature is everything. And then we kind of go all the way to other, but uh, that includes nature is everything but what humans have created and nature is everything but humans and what humans have created. I talked a lot more about this earlier today. I'm happy to talk more about it in the future. Um, if, or if people have questions. Uh, a second big question that we were looking at, and then I'm going to get to something that I didn't cover today. So this is another one of our big questions, the relationship between humans and nature. Uh, you can see the responses up here. Humans are stewards of nature. Very few actually uh, report humans have dominion over nature. That, that response seems to have diminished over time. Uh, but we also asked kind of what do they get from their time spent walking, hiking, trekking? And this is just very briefly some of the responses that we see. Peace of mind, solace, connection, exercise, of course, pops up there. Time to reflect. Very few people say that they use this to, to take risks, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, a lot of people don't do their walking, hiking, or trekking to meet new people, which I think is interesting as well. Um, but they're, they're kind of getting a sense of happiness, achievement, perspective by doing this. Uh, we also have included in this survey some open-ended questions. I'm just going to kind of hit on one of these that is actually 
already given us some really interesting and insightful responses. So one of the questions that we have in the survey is this one right here. Imagine you could write a short letter to nature and nature would read it. What would you say in 500 words or less? It's kind of a weird question, but just give you a sampling of some of the responses. Here's one. Uh, this is a letter to nature. Your beauty is beyond words. From the tallest mountain to the intricate wings of a, a wing of a dragonfly, I'm amazed at the beauty of it all. I cry when I see your trees cut down for another building put up. I'm so sorry for what man has done to you over the years. We need to give you more than we take away. We need to stop, put technology to the side, and sit, sit quietly and embrace all that you give us. You are where I find solitude, where I find peace. You are my haven. It's just, a, a, just some of these amazing responses. Here's another one that was very short. We need this planet. This planet does not need us. I was taught this in fourth grade and I respect it. I think that's a good one. It's kind of fun. You're beautiful. Your ocean waves are my favorite. I'm sorry your ocean water is polluted by carelessness. Your skies are gorgeous. I'm sorry they're fogged by man-made smoke. I will not throw trash onto you. I'll take action and encourage others to act. And just one more that is a little bit of a different perspective that I thought was cool. You're beautiful, peaceful, and calming, yet you can be destructive, fierce, and intimidating. You should be respected by humanity, but unfortunately, most times you're not. I hope, I hope humans start to treat you with the respect and love you deserve. Otherwise, humanity may be sorry. Anyway, so that's just some of the very preliminary data that we have at this point where uh, the, the current state, we're applying for ethics approval in the various countries. So we're getting very close to launching. The plan is actually to launch our survey by August in most of the countries that are uh, involved in this. Uh, some of the others might be a month or two behind that. Um, and then we also plan to conduct some interviews to complement the survey data. Uh, and we have some other plans beyond that, but that's basically where we are. And I will kind of stop here. Um, that's me in nature uh, trekking and turn it back over to whoever's next. I'll, I'll just flip over to Peter next, but I just do want to point out a couple of things. Um, Ryan put up the team that we've been working with, and I wanted to say we've been working with an incredible team of uh, graduate student research assistants and also a few undergraduate um, and I want to just say that they have been phenomenal. They're enthusiastic. They're, as you might appreciate, given that we're an international team, finding times to meet is somewhat challenging and frequently Doug Ezzy is up at five in the morning and Inger Furseth is up at 10 at night and all of the rest of us are in between and the research assistants are there every meeting, every time and with enthusiasm and contributing in the research design in the conversations. And so I would like to just mention that um, there we have it. We're really fortunate to have an incredibly dedicated group, uh, not only of co-investigators and collaborators, but research assistants as well and postdocs. Um, over to you, Peter. For the